Hello everybody, and welcome to another special episode of the Power Most Podcast. Why is it special, you ask? Well, because it's just me today. No Duncan. I didn't want to get a guest this week. I was like, you know what, I've, I've done a full LP by myself, which by the way, the ending of What Remains of Edith Finch is up. So check that out, it's a pretty good game. And outside of that, I've, I've done a lot of streaming solo, and I was like, you know what, I, I can tackle this podcast. I can drive this ship solo. Uh, hopefully. Anyway, I got a good feeling I'm not going to come close to even clocking in at 90 minutes. But uh, when I post this, you'll know before I do. So, lucky you. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, I talked about it enough leading up to this week. And uh, I want to do a little pat myself on the back. Uh, I finished a marathon this morning. So that was... Uh, most of my week, really, was trying to not eat like garbage and exercise. Uh, failing at both, knowing the run was coming up today. But, God damn it, I did it. I did pretty... I did okay. Uh, I have no idea what position I came in. Uh, frankly, I don't want to know. Um, but I know my time, and I, I'm happy with it. Uh, you had to estimate your finish time before you started, and I came within a minute. I was a minute under my predicted time, so I was like, fuck yes, I'm happy with that. I'll take it. But I gotta say, uh, those are, they are not easy. Jesus Christ. I do all of my running on a treadmill, and I never once ran outside prior to this marathon in training for it. And I didn't realize how much running on asphalt will fuck with your knees. And I've already got bad knees. So, when I got home, my legs are killing me. I can barely walk. I'm trying to... It's really hard to be proud of yourself when you know that within 10 positions, probably... I didn't really look behind me to see. But pretty close behind me was a man who I think was in his 80s. So that tells you how good of shape uh, I am in my mid-20s. And that's a good sign, right? When a guy in your 80s can match you in a long-distance running event. But I will say it was a super interesting experience. I'll definitely do it again next year. Maybe prepare a little bit more. But I would totally recommend everyone everyone go do one. Even if it's just a small, like a, like a short one. It, it's really interesting to be part of a huge group of people if you like people which i usually don't i mean it's basically like being at a, at a nightclub for an for an hour which you know i dabble from time to time so good job me uh what else have i done this week not much not a whole lot uh i got back into playing kingdom hearts and i get back into playing dark souls i guess i I guess I started getting into it last week, but Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 1, still still great game, still love it. Um, boy, is that game shorter than I remember. I mean, I'm just flying through it. I think I've got one world left, and I'm only at like ten and a half hours. Also, because there's no Duncan, I'm in my house again, so you might hear a goddamn cat. But I set up the microphone so you can't knock it over again. So that's good. Uh, Dark Souls, I beat the Ringed City DLC. I don't know how I feel about that DLC if it is if it does end up being the the end of Dark Souls. It I don't know, it wasn't super strong to me. I mean, shout out to Vadi Vidya for kind of explaining it to me. But I, I don't know. I I don't like a series that goes on for 3 games. And the ending is still, well, it's up to you. That's bullshit. Like, give me a concrete answer to the questions. Um, the start of the Ring DLC, Ringed City DLC was kind of kind of poo. But when you got into the second zone, the, the Ringed City, uh, it was actually pretty good. Uh, the bosses were all right. The final boss was kind of a letdown, uh, but I won't spoil that. Even though, yeah, it's old enough, but I, I still won't spoil it. Because I have friends who are just playing Dark Souls 3 for the first time now. And I also, because I've had a lot of time to kill lately, and I guess I'll just do anything to avoid watching anime, uh, started Iron Fist again. 
and not again. Uh, went back to finish it. I only got about halfway through last time, so I thought I'd go back and actually finish it because I will say, as much as I was not like Iron, I, as much as I was not liking that show, the Defenders trailer got me really excited. So I figured I should be fair and go back and watch the rest. Um, it's been long enough that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm gonna go into something. I fucking hate Claire, uh, Rosario Dawson's character. She was fine in Daredevil and Luke Cage, and, uh, she was probably in Jessica Jones, but I don't really remember. She's fine. She's just, you know, I'm a nurse on the DL that'll, or she's a nurse, not in the DL, that will help you on the DL, keep your secret, blah, blah, blah. And that's a fine character. But in Iron Fist, she takes, like, one Taekwondo class or whatever the fuck Colleen teaches, and now suddenly she can hold her own against the hand. That's bullshit. Like, in the same show, Danny and Colleen are both still struggling to fight the hand, and she, on more than one occasion in the later episodes, takes out guys by herself. She, they have not built her up to be this fighting master. Now, granted, she doesn't do it, like, super gracefully but still go away claire so before i get into the news and the rantings and ravings that i hope to have today uh, i want to talk about a man that i saw the other day who was the most fascinating man i've ever seen in my life he was walking in the opposite directions i was so, so i got a pretty good look at him and he was clearly homeless for lack of a better word he, it was all like the face, the hair, the clothing was pretty clear. The guy was probably homeless, but what made him so weird is that he was like this homeless centaur where the top half looked homeless and the bottom half, he looked like a goddamn hipster. So he wore like this giant, what are those shitty hoodies? that those weed kids wear I don't know but I wish I could remember the name of them but they were super popular for a while I it, I still see them around but it was way too hot to be wearing one and that's the first tip off that you're probably crazy um but his bottom half he was wearing like tight baby blue pants and riding a fucking hoverboard I have never once in my life seen a man who looked one half parking lot meth addict and one half Black Keys concert. It was amazing and I wanted to talk to him and know everything about him. And it was the first time ever I was like, what made you dress like that today? Because he's either a homeless man with some hella good pant choice or he actually isn't homeless and just has terrible fashion sense. Which is more believable because that's where him and I would have a thing in common. Well, Duncan would agree with me here. Jeans and graphics tees all day. So I, despite saying I should multiple times, did not arrange my topics in order of movies, video games, and uh, dumb shit, I guess. So I'm going to scroll through them here every now and then. But we'll start with, well, we'll start with everything else first because I think there's less. Uh, so first up, the trailers have dropped for the Emoji Movie. And I think I'm in the hardcore minority in thinking that movie doesn't look terrible. Do I think I'd like it? I don't know. But I see most animated movies that just comes with the job. There's a theater underneath work. Like, we just all go see them. It's just, it's what happens when you make cartoons for a living. Uh, and I'll probably go see it, honestly. But... It's getting a lot of hate, and frankly, I can't tell why. My The only thing I can imagine is because it's emojis, and people my age don't like emojis, which they should. They're great. Now, I don't use them, and I've seen a lot of people say some pretty fair things about the movie so far. Um, shout out to the guy on whatever social media platform I was watching who said, I bet someone gets kicked in the nuts and says, ow, my eggplant. I think you're right on that one, sir. I think we do have that happen. But I don't think it looks terrible. I, I think people are just uptight about the emoji part. And look, I, I saw Ghostbusters, like like the new one, and I was pleasantly surprised by that movie. Uh, did I love it? No, but I didn't love the originals either. I thought it was okay. 
if not good, you know, it wasn't bad at all. And I imagine the Emoji Movie will be similar. It probably will have humor that doesn't isn't my type of thing at all, but that goes for most of the shows I work on every day. So I'm used to pretty terrible terrible jokes in what I watch. But in a cooler movie-related news, the Venom uh, movie has cast its actor, and it has a director uh, who I meant to look into what the director has done, but luckily I have my computer with me so I can look things up on the fly now. Also, I know I shit on Duncan for eating and drinking on the podcast, but uh, fuck you, I'm tired, I'm having a coffee. Uh, Okay, so Tom Hardy is playing Venom, and the movie will be directed by Rob Ruben Fleischer, who did uh, Zombieland, Gangster Squad, seen both those movies, both pretty solid. Um, Tom Hardy is good. I have no real beef with that casting. I just have beef with the movie in general, really. Oh, I get some more news on it there at the bottom, but I'll touch on that in a second. My biggest question about this movie is why? Of all the Spider-Man movies, of which there have been six, well, five, but the sixth one's coming out, um, what, in like a month or two? It's pretty soon that Homecoming's coming out. Uh, So we'll be at six very soon, and Venom's been in one of them. Like, Venom is not a household name at all. And to give him his own movie, like, there's... Marvel or DC aside, like, just comic books in general, there's not a ton of villains that are so pronounced in society. And I don't mean, like, comic nerds or, like, you're, you know, just not even comic nerds, just nerds in general. Um, of course, they're going to have a more understanding of characters and have a bigger knowledge of other characters. But the general po- population, which, guess what? We, you need to get those people's attention because they're the there's more of them than there are us. And Venom is a fucking nobody. I mean, the last character to play uh, Venom was fucking What's-His-Face from that 70s show. I mean, Spider-Man 3 was Spider-Man 3. I don't hate that movie, but a lot of people did. So, and I get this as a reboot. Are they going to set up Venom in Homecoming? I, I'm to me they have to. Um, maybe it's in a post credits or something because this is okay. So I'm being corrected on the fly by this fucking website. But still, let me keep ranting. Yeah, Venom is a nobody. The only characters in the in the general public's eye that could have its own movie that is it a villain is probably the Joker, and that's it. Um. No, I don't know if Joker could actually have his own movie. Maybe Harley Quinn and the Joker could. Um, Paul Dini has been writing these uh, little short Joker and Harley, uh, you know, just a few page long stories at the end of some of the issues of Harley Quinn lately. And they're pretty good. So maybe they could, but... So I'm just going to read straight from the article and tear it apart as I, as I see fit here. Uh, so blah, blah, blah. Sony Pictures has uh, signed Tom Hardy. Stars Eddie Brock. Blah, blah, blah. And also the other my other beef, because this website brings it up, is bringing up that Hardy played Bane. And there's enough actors out there. And now, look, I know the, Chris, the, the Nolan-verse Batman is not canon in Marvel or, or obviously in Marvel, but in DC anymore, but get somebody else, like cast one person as one comic character, and then that's their comic character for the rest of their life, like the pool is big enough, ladies and gentlemen, that you don't need to keep picking the same fucking actors, so onward we go, Venom will hail from Sony's Marvel universe of characters, which we know because Sony owns Venom and Spider-Man. Uh, will not be a spin-off of the current Marvel Cinematic Universe wherein Sony allows Spider-Man to be played by Tom Holland. Excuse me, what? So the way that's written tells me that Sony is going to have another Spider-Man after Tom Holland for their own movies and for this Venom. That's ridiculous. If that's true, it might be I'm reading it wrong or it might be written wrong. I don't know. But I hope that's not the case. But yeah, this is weird. The whole Sony-Marvel deal, it's it's weird. 
Let's talk about what has got the internet abuzz in the TV world. And that's something that I personally don't really give a shit about, but I'll probably watch it. And that is The Witcher uh, has been greenlit for a TV series. Um, I think it's set to come out end of next year, maybe. It's getting through this website. I can't see them confirming a date, but fuck it. Let's put words in their mouth. So, I'm all for this. Look, it's clear that everyone is looking for their Game of Thrones. And while Game of Thrones is on Netflix, Netflix doesn't own Game of Thrones, so they need a competitor. And because The Witcher 3 sold like fucking bananas, of course. Uh, And where these are being based off the books, not the games, I don't really know the difference. I know the games are just loosely based off the books, I think. I don't know. But there's like five or six books out there. And the author has given his thumbs up to this. So, so I was, I was hearing conflicting reports of this being live action or CG. Um, and now I'm under the impression that it's both. In that Geralt and the human characters will be actors and the monsters will be CG. That worries me. Because TV CG is still not very good. In my opinion. Um, I can't think of the last time I was wowed by CG on television. The last that, well, I also don't watch television. Um, I can't count, you know, there's nothing really in Iron Fist, so I haven't seen anything recently. Uh, so the last thing I remember is when Gorilla Grodd showed up in Flash? Arrow? I don't know. One of those CW shows. I don't remember which one he showed up in. I just saw the trailer. I never actually watched it. And now he looked decent, but in a world that will probably primarily be CG, I don't know if we're up to snuff. It, it's that or these episodes are going to take a long-ass time to finish to look good. So that worries me a little bit. But all the power to them and this uh, Polish production company that I've never heard of uh, that's working on it. But yeah, here's hoping that uh, fans of The Witcher, which there are a plenty, and I, I know a few personally that are big fans. I'm pretty sure Duncan is a fan. Um, if he's not, he's lying to you. Uh, but I've just never played... Okay, that's not true. I played The Witcher 2. And... I don't know, I just... I thought it was okay. I didn't fall in love, but... I, I don't remember perfectly, but I think I was playing that... At a time in which games weren't super hot for me anyway. So I kind of gave an unfair look at it. Um, but now that Witcher 3 has been out for a while. I mean it looks good. I just never touched it. And I don't know. Maybe I'll borrow it from a friend or something. Seeing as I'm running out of shit to do. And running out of money to buy new games. But. Moving on. We have. Ubisoft had a fart of a drop earlier this week in which they confirmed three new games and a release date for a fourth. And my fir- and those games are uh, The Crew 2, Far Cry 5, uh, confirmed Assassin's, the new Assassin's Creed, and gave South Park the release date of October 17th. So those are big like those are ubisoft's that's all of their pegs right there there's their racing game there's their shooter game there's their adventure game and there's their whatever you want to call south park rpg fantasy comedy game i don't know what the fuck is ubisoft hiding to drop something like that a month before e3 i mean they can't just show off those things they have to have more than that Because the biggest fun of E3 is being surprised. And Ubisoft is... eh, Ubisoft and EA are tied for the least exciting. We know what we're going to get every year. The new installment of, you know, the sports game. The new installment of Just Dance. The new Assassin's Creed or the new Far Cry, blah, blah, blah. So, what are they hiding? And I'm under the impression they definitely are if they're confirming these games. Do I think we see a trailer for one or all of them at the show? 
Yeah, probably. But they have to be having more if they're confirming this this far out. Uh, now, I haven't played Assassin's Creed since Black Flag. So it's been a minute for me. And where... I mean, we talked about this uh, an episode or two ago on the podcast that this one will be set in Egypt. And by the looks of things, this is going to be the closest thing I get to a Prince of Persia game. So I might pick this one up. Because it's... It's been long enough, and I, I, you know what, I do enjoy them. People will say, oh, they sh- they suck. Well, then who the fuck is buying them all then? Because they sell pretty goddamn well. Uh, the crew, no real opinion on that. I played the beta uh, for the first one. Uh, the map was really impressive. But racing isn't really my thing. So, eh, could take it or leave it. Far Cry 5 has me very interested because I skipped Far Cry Primal, not on purpose, just... <sighs> Look, a lot of games come out way too close together, and Far Cry Primal kind of bit the dust for me. I wanted to pick it up, because cavemen are cool, and I like Far Cry. Now, I'm a, I'm a baby Far Cry fan, because I've only played Far Cry 4. Uh, I never played 3. I think I touched 2, but again, it was, a weir- it was in a weird time, so... I didn't care enough to pick up 3 when it came out. Before, I actually liked Far Cry 4 a lot. So, to get another one of those has me excited. Now, Far Cry 5 will probably not have a bow, which makes it, to me, an immediately worse game. Because I just fucking love bows. Which was, again, why I wanted to pick up Primal, but just never did. Maybe It's probably like $4 if I look. I, I don't imagine it goes for much these days. Uh, so Far Cry 5 has the potential to be fucking radical. Uh, as far as I know, it was confirmed that it's in Montana. And most people are under the assumption that means it's a western, because what is there to do in modern-day Manhattan other than pet horses and do crack? So, and that doesn't make for the most thrilling gameplay. But we'll see. There was... Parts of Far Cry 4 I didn't like. Uh, anyone who played it will be familiar with the like the two stoner dudes. Anything with them was just terrible, in my opinion. I didn't like the drug trippy shit. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I just didn't care for the humor in, in those games at all. I just wanted it to be a straightforward, go kill some shit. Um... And then South Park. This is the one that I'm... I don't know what to say about South Park. Uh, It was originally supposed to come out in December. So it's been delayed almost an entire year. Which... I know there's the quote, I think, from Miyamoto. uh, A bad game is... Or a delayed game is eventually good. Something like that. I'm butchering it, but you get the point. You know the quote. And I just worry that its initial delay was probably due to lack of quality. And now its release in a few months is... I'm just worried it's a kick-out-the-door situation where they go, look, we're not going to get this game to what Stick of Truth was, so let's just take this functioning game and kick it the fuck out uh you know a la metal gear 5 i know i doubt it's as unfinished as that was but i'm worried because i think i've talked about it before but in case i haven't buckle up i'm gonna tell the same story again i the last game i ever torrented was stick of truth because I was under the impression that that game is not worth $60. No way, Jose. And I was wrong. Totally was. But I already had the game. Beat it. You know, what the fuck was I going to do? Pay for it? No. Ew. Um, but, you know, that game shut me up. It showed me that it was a fucking good game. So I went over 
the necessary steps for this new game and i bought the uh the legendary or collector's edition or whatever in canadian was like over 200 dollars and now I'm worried I paid $200 for a piece of shit. Because uh, if the game's not good, I paid $200 for a Coon Man statue. And that's not worth $200. So I, I am a little worried about my investment. Now luckily for me, I already paid it all off. So the money is long gone and it's not really missed anymore. <sighs> I just want it to be good and they they dropped a new trailer earlier this week really really showcasing the new fart tech and honestly I don't know how many people agree with me but the fart jokes were the weakest of the entire first game I think the fart and shit jokes were the weakest of all of South Park in the earlier seasons Uh, they're much better with this sort of poking at society uh, stuff in my opinion so I wish they that, so that trailer definitely has me worried about how much farts are going to be in it because I I don't want that I don't want that at all but at least I can feel confident that the game will be as funny as the first one barring the fart jokes but we'll see how that turns out. Next up, something that uh, a friend of mine is just riled up over. So it's half the reason I wanted to talk about it. Because I spent a large chunk of my week arguing with him. And it's that <clears throat> Microsoft has renewed their Scalebound license. You know, that canceled game that kind of came and went. And I honestly don't think that many people remember. Uh, it looked good, but I, I I think that, again, the general populace, I don't think they really knew that it was a game. But a lot of people were excited. Uh, no, I wasn't. You know, Colin, Power Moose's local Sony, Sony pony. Didn't really care that Xbox was getting an RPG by Platinum. But I, but I will say it did look good. The first trailer. The second trailer was a little... Eh, I don't know what this game's going to be. But the first trailer looked good. And as we all know, it got canned. Why? Who knows? And this goes into a long line of shit that... I wish we were just told everything. I wish after the dust settled... They just put out a press release or something. And was like... Here's why this game got cancelled, or here's why this happened, here's what that happened. I mean, that's... I'd buy a fucking book for that. 100% I'd buy a book on, like, the shit behind the scenes in the video game industry on why things got cancelled, or blah, blah, blah. But, so they renewed the license. And so that got a lot of people excited, because there was... It was sort of up in the air who owned the game and not the name. And now a lot of people were thinking, oh, cool, they just booted Platinum, they'll take the game and get some other studio to finish it. Um, But that gets you two problems with one problem being, I don't think Microsoft has a studio that could finish that game. Two, uh, they don't have the game either, which is the more important of the two. Um, The basically came out and said report said that Platinum would not be involved in this game anymore. What a surprise. Mikami kind of a little salty at Phil for this. Um, And Microsoft would essentially be making the game from scratch, so it's unlikely we see it anytime soon. So, uh, the game Scalebound that you saw is uh, dead. Uh, Rest in peace, Virgil. Or, no. Nero. Should have said Nero. It looked like Nero. Uh, that game's dead. So, at some point, here, here's the greatest game announcement of all time. At some point, someday, you'll get a game called Scalebound. And that's about it. That's what that game announcement was. But back to, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, this story just kind of popped in my head. I had no plans on talking about it. But I keep seeing that Rhyme, little indie game by, uh, 
Tequila Works. That sounds right. Let me double let me double check here if my computer wasn't so fucking slow. Rhyme video game. Tequila Works. Yes. Okay. So in one of my favorite gaming stories of all time, last year, there was a real weird one with Rhyme. Now, I was initially skeptic of, skeptical of the game because I had played Tequila Works last game, um, which was uh, some side-scrolling zombie shooter, dying, D Deadlight. I guess that wasn't their last game. I guess uh, they also did the Sexy Brutal, which has been, I've heard good things about. So maybe they've turned things around. Oh, they only helped on that game. That's why. So Deadlight is not a great game, in my opinion. I, I didn't like it that much. I liked it enough to beat it, I guess. So that's saying something, because I've definitely played games that are not worth beating. So a little skeptical, skeptical hippo face in, in when I first saw Rhyme. And then... The, the Just one of my favorite stories is Sony goes and checks out the game uh, because it was originally supposed to be a first-party Sony game. And there's just no game. They lied. It was all the gameplay trailer that they showed originally at uh, E3 or PSX. I don't remember which one it was shown at. was all cinematics that was just made to mimic gameplay because I guess they didn't have any game makers or anyone who you know knew how to make it a, a game make it playable I don't know enough about shit to know who they were missing but it, and Sony dropped them they said no fuck like fuck you you're you're done and I I want to know what went on there I really want to know the truth of that story if that version is true and now the reason why I bring this up is because Rhyme comes out soon comes out this month I believe this is not actual release date? May 26th, so it comes out in a few days. Uh, apparently it's fucking good. Apparently it's, like, it's getting uh, eights and nines by, like, some pretty spec, you know, some pretty reputable sources. And, I mean, fuck. Good job, guys. Like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll pick it up. It looked interesting. It's got a really cool art style. And, but I, I'm still so confused that if it is true that they didn't have a game when Sony went and see, saw them a year, maybe two years ago, and now they have a full great game, how the fuck did they slap it together so quickly? They hired on a fucking wizard is what they must have done if that, if that uh, original story is true. So, maybe we'll play that on the channel? I don't know. Uh, our next two OP. Actually, by the way, Edith Finch, Edith Finch is done. Anyone who follows us on Twitch, because we're too cheap to buy a capture card, knows what our next game, what what our next LP is going to be, because we we just stream on Twitch and rip the fucking videos off because we're fucking morons. One day, I'll get a capture card so we can get decent footage. One day. But, that day is not today. But anyway, I won't spoil it for you listeners. Uh, we do have a new LP starting on Wednesday. Bloodborne's still going strong. And it will be for quite some time. Uh, because I think where we're at currently in Bloodborne, Duncan still hasn't beaten the first boss, or the second, the first real boss, Gascoin. Still hasn't beat Gascoin. So, uh, that's going to be a long road, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, now with Duncan playing a lot of Dark Souls 3, hopefully he gets better. So, you know, maybe it'll speed things up a little bit, but uh, I have my doubts because Dark Souls... And Bloodborne played just differently enough that I actually think him switching from back and forth will actually do him ha more harm than good. But yeah, look forward to that. New LP on Wednesday. Uh, we're aiming for it to be a full LP. We've already played half the game. 
or almost half of the game. So it's not going to be a super long one, which I think that's probably going to be what uh, slot B turns into is, you know, not games that are 50 or 60 hours long. So we can have a couple of those running against Bloodborne. Because Bloodborne's going to be a while. Uh, especially where I might make Duncan play the DLC because the Bloodborne DLC, uh, was it the first Hunters? As much of a fan I am, I don't remember the name at all. That's some great DLC, and I would argue the best DLC that company has put out. Uh, but back to me saying, you know, just a nothing announcement, sort of like Ubisoft saying, okay, yeah, those games are out. We have uh, Don't Nod doing an equally boring drop where the words just kind of fell out of their mouth and they didn't even bother trying to speak. Uh, Life is Strange 2, or, well, I shouldn't say Life is Strange 2. A new Life is Strange story is, I believe, exactly what they said. Now, Life is Strange is a little cringe at times. Uh, it, it can get really bad with some of the dialogue, but I get it. I'm in my mid-20s. I, I'm not a teen. I don't know how the kids talk these days. Uh, and if you've looked at the developer f- for or the the head of development for Life is Strange, looks like that guy's probably pretty familiar with high school girls, if you know what I mean. And but I, for the most part, liked Life is Strange. Um, but there are definitely things I would want improved. I, I can deal with the dialogue. They're dumb, shitty kids. And dumb, shitty kids use dumb, shitty words. Like me. They suffer from the telltale, don't know how to do lip sync at all. And why we still call that acceptable, I don't know. It's not. And if I see the same thing, I may have to put my foot down. Vote with your wallet, kids. And not buy that fucking game. That's why I still haven't bought a Telltale game. Uh, well, the last two, anyway. Because they still don't know how to fucking animate. And as someone who does it for a living, it makes me pretty upset that people get paid to not do it. When I barely get paid to do it. I was just kidding. I make, Duncan and I make decent money. Uh, animators as a whole. We're not Japan. That's what I should say. Japanese animators are really thrown under the bus. Um, It would probably be a better payment to just kick them in the head uh, than to give them the pay they make in Japan. It's pretty rough over there right now. I don't know if you've looked into it at all. So, onwards to... I miss some of the non-video game stories. Those will have to wait. Too, too deep into the video game hall right now. I want to keep going. So next up, Destiny 2. Another game I don't really care about, but... And I don't really know how popular that game is because I don't have any friends that are playing it. I don't even know anyone who's playing it. But I know at every Sony conference since that game came out, they're saying, like, here's how many people are playing Destiny, so it seems like it's pretty popular. Uh, and I hear good things. I heard good things about the the last expansion, whatever it was, I don't know. Game of Thrones, sure. Uh, I got, I got some beef with, uh, fuck, what studio does it? Bungie. Bungie makes Destiny 2. I get some beef, fellas. So, I don't have a PS4 Pro, so... I'm in the perfect position to complain about a PS4, PS4 Pro issue. So, um, the game runs amazingly on PC. What a surprise, folks, that the PC runs well. Uh, I think on PC it runs at 4K with unlimited frame rate, which I never really understand. Or I guess not unlimited frame rate, just an uncapped frame rate. It's just whatever your PC can handle. It'll shoot out for you. Um... But PS4 Pro runs locked 4K 30 FPS. What? 
so I get I, I got some beef with that. And now I'm gonna put it out there for this topic. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know the inner workings of the PS4. I don't know how games work. But I'm just going to give you my little, like, insight into why this fucking bothers me. Because I think I'm right. Because I always think I'm right. So, 4K, 30 FPS. Why? Why? Look, I know the whole point of the Pro was it runs at 4K. Sort of. I think it upscales it. I, I, I don't know. I should have probably looked... Looked at more information about that fucking machine by before I talked about this. But that is not what this podcast is, ladies and gentlemen. We go in with no facts and yell about being wrong. So I don't I don't see why So 4K TVs are still not the norm. And I don't think they will be for a little bit. Now that being said, a friend of mine got a 4K TV. It looks prettier and is bigger than mine, so maybe I'm in the market to get me one soon. I don't know, because I'm a jealous piece of shit and uh, always want a new piece of tech. But I don't see a reason why they couldn't just run this game locked 1080 at 60. Or give the option anyway. Uh, that's I, I don't know a ton of games that do it. I know The Last of Us for sure gave you an option. Do you want prettier... You know, do you want prettier pictures or do you want more frames? And, and just give people the fucking option. Um, I'm, I feel pretty confident that the Pro could run 1080 60. Which, I thought that's what we were all shooting for. The gaming industry as a whole cannot, has not been able to hit a staple, to hit the 1080 60 we've all been looking for for so fucking long. We're still getting, you know, 900s or, you know, 1080-30s and shit like that. We haven't hit the goal of a few years ago yet. Um, the Pro is helping. Uh, Scorpio will definitely help because the Scorpio is even much, even stronger. But... Now, do I think it matters that much? No. Destiny is not like a super fast-paced game. I, I don't think it's too diminished from being at 30 as opposed to 60. Uh, from my experience and from what I hear people say, 60 isn't super needed unless you're playing like a character action game like Bayonetta or a fighting game like Street Fighter in case you didn't know what a fighting game was. Um, because then you you need all the frame you need all the frames you can get for that shit. Um, we're a slower paced game, which Destiny I wouldn't say Destiny is slow, but it's neither of those for sure. But I want an explanation, Bungie, for your game that I'm not gonna buy anyway. Why can't that game? Why can't you give us the option, 4K 30 or 1080 60? Because frankly. I would take the 1080 60 because I don't have a 4K TV, so it wouldn't matter anyway. But now, we get to my favorite company. My favorite company to bitch and moan about because, I don't know, it just is because I'm, I'm, I'm a garbage human being. Nintendo. Uh, recently, Fire Emblem's Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of... Valencia, I'm probably mispronouncing that, uh, got its season pass, and it costs more than the game. Uh, the season pass includes new dungeons, didn't say how many, uh, maps, didn't say how many, new classes, I saw two, but maybe more, uh, and a little bit of prequel story. So, that's ridiculous. Uh, and they're going to get away with it, which is my real complaint here. A season pass should never, under any circumstance, cost more than the base game. You can't charge more than the base game unless you're giving me an equal amount of content to the base game. And in this case, more than the base content, which, from what it sounds like, that, you're not getting that. So, too bad, kids. 
if you want the full game, buy two of them, basically. Which is ridiculous. And my beef with this is... Nintendo's gonna get away with it. In fact, they did. It, you can buy it, and it's still more than the fucking game. And why are they gonna get away with it? Because Nintendo fans are shit. They just... Nintendo is in such this weird pocket lately because I do most of my game predictions on what's going to sell and blah, 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 based primarily off Sony and Microsoft because I, I understand them. They're relatively normal. PC is just a, the fucking wild west of uh, green light and indie games and open alpha betas that... Uh, are never finished for 19 years. So I don't even try with PC. And Nintendo, I like it to try. And I could keep up with them during the Wii U days. As they were very predictable company. Because they were failing. So if you guessed what their next step was going to be and it was bad. Well, uh, ding ding, you got it right. Because that, Ninten that Nintendo during the Wii U was just fucking up constantly. But now we have the Switch. Which... I have played. It's a fine console. Still think the Joy-Cons a little too small. Um, you know, remember Nintendo. Most of your fans are probably over twenty years old. I, I don't imagine the majority of your purchases came from Little Timmy on his birthday. They came from Big Greg with his gorilla mitts, and those Joy Cons are too fucking small for an adult. But you can get used to them. It's fine. Whatever. And this company is just everything, I guess, is wrong. And it's because the fans just... The fans are baffling to me. The fact that um, Mario Kart sold as crazy high as it did blows my fucking mind. It... It's a port. I don't know if any port has ever sold that well. Like, barring the exception of, like, uh, it's been, like, a five or six years since we've seen the game. And, like, hey, it's coming in, you know, coming to the consoles or something. Maybe in that case, if it's, like, a really love franchise. Like, um, the Crash Insane trilogy, I have a feeling that'll do pretty well. We'll, we'll see. Um, but that's also not a port. That's a, I mean, that's a fucking full remake if you've seen that game. But it's a port. And why did people buy it? Because it's Nintendo. And Nintendo released a new game. So you gotta buy it. Because it's Nintendo. And... I'm just gonna keep talking myself in circles here. Because I just... I can't stand it. The fact that people still say... EA is the worst company in gaming because they're microtransaction bullshit. Which, don't get me wrong, some of it is. Some of it is EA. Some of, some of the stuff you do is full of shit. But you know who's worse? Nintendo. Nintendo's worse. Nintendo is, in my opinion, for several years in a row, the worst company in gaming. And their fans just don't care. Or are unaware or turned a blind eye. I don't know. But I see the truth, people. And as I start going down this fucking rant, the tinfoil hat is lowering on my goddamn head. Because I'm like, I see the truth, everybody. You're all fucking Nintendo sheep. And Pastor Colin, I don't know why I'm a pastor now, but he sees the light. Sony Power. What the fuck was I even saying? I don't even remember. Right. They're a piece of shit company. It all started back with the Amiibos. I mean, they're selling unfinished games. Okay, okay, let's compare... Um, what Nintendo does with most of the Amiibos in, like, say, Splatoon or really any other game, Mario Party. You know, pick whatever you want. They work basically the same in every game. Uh, and compare it to a game that I know a little more, you know, I, I know better is uh, Overwatch. Um, how many people would uh, really just love it if uh, instead of playing and leveling up normally to get skins in Overwatch, you had to pay an extra 1350 uh, per skin. You think people would like that? No. And they wouldn't get away with it, because it's Blizzard. But you know who would? 
if uh, Nintendo released Nintendo Watch and it was just a blatant clone of Overwatch just starring Nintendo characters um, in every single skin you had to buy that amiibo, I bet they'd love it. I feel very confident. They could release an entire fucking Smash Brothers game with no roster and you have to fill out the roster by buying amiibos. And people would go, oh, that's so cool. Now I don't have to have these shitty characters in my roster. I can just have the good ones of the Amiibos I already own. Which, if I owned that game, it would be 19 Little Macs, and that would be the entire ro- that would be the entire roster. Which, by the way, Nintendo, where's my punch out? Where's my punch out? But I- I'm just gonna talk myself into a fucking circle because I don't have anyone across from me or with me to be like oh but Colin but this but this so I'm just I'm just gonna shut up because I don't know I don't know what else to say I I think they have shitty oh right the fucking YouTube thing they are the only company that has that fucking YouTube thing where like you have to give them the majority if not all of their money if you want to play their fucking games on YouTube and as someone uh, like Duncan and I are doing this whole streaming thing and putting up LPs on YouTube. And by the way, you should go watch them. Uh, that like that's fucking stupid. Not to mention that I, I, I couldn't if I knew how because that goes back to we're too cheap to buy a capture card, so couldn't play a Nintendo game even if we wanted to because it doesn't have Twitch. But people just keep eating it up. Wake up, people. Because they get a w- they do these things because they can. That's why every company does what it does. Every company finds the line of what their fans are willing to put up with, and they ride that line. Once in a while, they'll push a little too far, and they might get some bicker, you know, some yip-yap at them, and, that's, and the line gets pushed back to where it was. But... <sighs> Nintendo fans have just that was like you know what let's not put up uh, what's acceptable for Nintendo let's just uh, make it anything and let the company do anything they want and we'll just go good job give it you know as long as I got Zelda I don't care I feel confident that a Nintendo representative could come into your, your, your a, a a fuck a Stereotypical Nintendo fanboy in a Nintendroid, which, by the way, is like the coolest name of all the fanboys. Um, at least that's the only one I've heard is Nintendroid. Um, they could a Nintendo rec- representative could just walk into their house and go, uh, "Hey, I'm gonna kill your family and uh, take your furniture," and they would go, uh, "Do you have Zelda DLC?" And they would go, uh, "Yes," and they would go, "Okay, that's fine. I, I don't need them anyway. Uh, I'll just sit on the floor and." Uh, play as Wolf Link and stare at his wolf asshole while you uh, stuff my parents into a fucking casket. I... So, I I guess I don't hate them. I hate the fans. And I only know one person I would call a fan personally. And him and I fight constantly about this shit. Because I'm not going to back down. And either will he. As he shouldn't. Because... As stated on a previous episode, uh, you shit talk Sony. I might kill your parents. That's what I might do if you insult my baby. So, I get why they do it. Fanboyism is strong. It's a strong thing to be a part of. And it's fucking stupid. I'll admit it. I'm fucking stupid for liking Sony as much as I do. Just as, like, everyone at Nintendo is fucking stupid for everything they do. So I guess it's my hate isn't even at Nintendo or Nintendo fans. It's fanboys as a whole. Because will I put up with most of Sony's shit? Yeah, probably. You know, give me a... You know, they do some dumb shit and you give me a free month of PlayStation Plus. Yeah, yep, they'll shut my mouth, sure. Why not? All right. Speaking of Overwatch. The Overwatch anniversary starts... This week. Well, or next week. I, is Sunday still considered the first of the week? If it is, then yeah, it's this week. Um, I believe it starts the 23rd, which is, what, Tuesday? Because I can't, I can't daze. It's the 21st, Monday, 22nd, Tuesday, 23rd. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, 
And now I, again, didn't do any research into this before talking about it. But as far as I know, they're hiding what's going on at this this uh, anniversary event pretty well. Because we're a few days away, and we know fuck all. Overwatch animated shorts are coming back. Fuck yes. Uh, right. So I was just doing a quick Google to see if they uh, talked about it. Doesn't seem they did. Maybe I'm wrong. Because I'm not going to look too much into it while I'm being recorded. But why not just fucking tell us? And I'm a little let down. And I think everyone is probably with me. Because we were so sure. All of the signs pointed to the anniversary event. We get Doomfist. Especially if you look at um, all the stuff they did to the maps during the Uprising event. Where you, they were all smashed about, uh, presumably, uh, on, on Numbani, where the Doomfist is at. Um, so it would set up him being around. And he never came out on the PTR, which means we're not getting him in two, in two days. And that fucking sucks. Now, did we just get Orissa? Yeah, but I don't like Orissa. So, uh... Why don't you treat me, Blizzard? Why don't you give me what I want? <sighs> but yeah, they, they showed off a few new skins. Uh, four skins, to be precise. A lot of people didn't like them. I thought they were okay. Um, the Bastion one was okay. The Feral one... Eh. The Feral one's okay. It is kind of similar to another one of her skins... But really, there's only one Farrah skin, it's the Gundam skin, and that's it, and everything else was wrong. Uh, the Soldier skin, I actually kind of like. And then the Zarya skin, where she just looks like a superhero. Um, I guess you could call it that look. But in, in this news, um, I assume it came from Jeff, because who else does Blizzard news come from? Uh, is that... Um, heads up to anyone who doesn't know, which there's no way people who listen to this don't already know this, but they're done making events. Uh, Jeff came out and said they're, they're not going to make any more. That uh, what we have is what we got, and that's all we're going to get. Um, so this summer, you know, we'll get Lucio Ball again. Um Will they add improvements to it? Yeah, maybe. Um, but I don't even know if we're going to get any new skins or anything. Any new summer skins. You know, like Reaper in a bikini, maybe. That, that one's free, Blizzard. You can take that. Give me Reaper in a bikini. But yeah, give me... Give, I'll always be down for skins. As long as we get new skins, I won't be too salty about there being no new events. But as a... I don't think the events that we've had throughout this year, and it's crazy that it's only been a year. I feel like I've been playing that game forever, even though I haven't clocked in that much time. I I only play it, like, well, I, I really only play it once or twice a week now. But I never played Lucio Ball, uh, so I guess I'm okay with that one coming back if it actually, if these reports are true. And these reports are from Jeff, so I'll, I'll say they're true. Uh, so I'd like to play Lucio Ball. But I didn't care for... Like, May Snowball Offensive was eh. Junkenstein's Revenge was eh. Uh, I'm sure there was other ones, but I can't remember. Oh, Uprising. I, I didn't care for Uprising, honestly. I, I thought it was okay. But I wasn't blown away. Uh, but if we get little tweaks... I imagine we get some sort of tweaks. And if we don't, like I said, give me new skins and I'll shut up. Because I like skins, and who doesn't? Because they're cool characters, you know. But yeah, a bit of a bummer. I, I hope what this actually means is they're going to take away all the resources that have spent that are spent working on these uh, little updates, that they, these events that they do, you know, a couple times a year, and take all of those resources and pull them into, like, a proper... I don't want to say expansion... But, like, give us a big chunk of content in another year's time. Um, where you drop 
game modes and maps and characters like all together maybe that'd be neat or maybe they're gonna make more shorts which i'd be down for that because everyone loves those shorts they're fucking great who doesn't love those shorts i know people who don't even play the game don't even know what it is don't know the characters names but watch those shorts because they're real good but that's it for game news uh i got two other things i wanted to talk about um they were just weird just weird things i came across uh both of them today or last night maybe one of them this morning for sure because it was my breakfast uh that i learned this but first we all know what marriage is shout out to married listeners out there i don't know if there are any but uh happy marriage um we all heard of polygamy but new to me is sologamy i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right sologamy sologamy anyway being married to one person or not being married to one person being married to yourself how far up your own ass do you have to be to be like i have found my soulmate it's my right hand and i'll love him forever I don't care how good a uh, how good you can jack yourself off or flick your bean. Why would you ever marry yourself? First of all, it's not recognized uh, in North America at all, as far as I know. You can still do it. You can go through the ceremony, and people have, which is how I found out about the story. Was a girl uh, married herself because she, you know, she believes she, you know, she doesn't like that all of her friends were getting married, so she settled down in her own way by going insane and marrying herself. Because I guess it's, that's just what we do. It's just what we do now. We marry ourselves. I can't fathom loving yourself that much. And now, look, I know some people who definitely love themselves. And I'm putting words in their mouth because I don't think they've ever said it. But I've met some real happy folk who I bet if I asked if they loved themselves, they'd probably say yes. I'm not part of that. I doubt Duncan is either. Most of the people I know, we all just fucking hate each other. Or hate ourselves. And each other. Sure. Everyone hates everybody. But to marry yourself? That's ridiculous. Especially where it's not legal. So why bother? And and, in this one fucking story that I was reading about it, where this girl married herself, she's like, well, even though I'm married... You know, I'll still sleep around with other people. Yeah, you don't know what you, you know what that's called? Being single. Because that's what you are. You're just so fucking delusional that you married yourself. Marrying that girl who married the Eiffel Tower in the Berlin Wall or the the piece of the Berlin Wall, or maybe I'm making that story up. I know the Eiffel Tower one is true though. Those are more legitimate to me. Because maybe that's a weird fetish. I don't know. And I know a lot of fetishes. I don't think any of them are... I'm just really into myself, you know? I don't think that's a fetish. So, I I guess a good job, government, at keeping that not recognized in in anywhere in North America. uh, Now that I'm trading it like one country. Uh, So, good job, Canada, I'll say. Shout out to our own government. Um, Maybe keep that the way it is. Maybe that's something we don't need. Um, Because I know a lot of people don't really like going to weddings in the first place. Can you imagine you get that card in the mail, you are cordially invited to so-and-so's wedding, and you go, ah, shit. Cousin Becky's getting married to probably some fucking schmo with no job. But I gotta go because it's my cousin. And I don't know why this persona is super Italian with a cousin named Becky. Not a very Italian name. But anyway. And then you somehow are such in such a like like automated, okay, wedding, okay, take the time off, blah, 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 go to the wedding. And then you get to the reception and find out this dumb bitch is marrying herself. I'd kill her at the altar. It's, it's, it's that simple. Anyone, 
if any of my family is listening, which they're not, by the way, thank God, uh, if you invite me to a wedding and you marry yourself, I might kill you. I'll kill you on the spot. Uh, that's a dumb thing to do. It's a dumb thing to do to people. Don't, don't do it. And the other thing, and this was my morning, which made for a very awkward breakfast. Um, so surprise, surprise, uh, you see Berkeley in the news. When aren't they these days? But uh, this time, for something they're not typically known for, uh, this was a weird story that, of course, once I heard it, I had to do a little deep dive and find it because I'm a pervert. So there's a little taste for what this is going to be. Uh, UC Berkeley student newspaper releases podcast. Uh, they have a podcast called Hard and Soft. It's about dicks, if you don't get the joke. Um, and the episode was called Surprise Porn. Uh, so from my understanding, with no consent whatsoever, they just put microphones up to the bottoms of people's doors while they're boning or, or just jerking off or, you know... Because I, I know in the clip that I heard... I didn't listen to the whole thing. Because uh, I, I can't last that long. I can't last five minutes. What are you, crazy? By the way, the podcast is only five minutes long. Um, I listened to about 30 seconds of the show. And it, it's exactly what it was. There was no content. Similar to this podcast. A lot like this podcast. If I could just have some buzzing in the background. and I don't know. Maybe someone slamming their foot. be the same amount of content. Um, and big surprise, it got removed by SoundCloud, which is where they host it. Um, I might be up on iTunes too. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I just thought that was fucking weird. Like, why would, why, why would you do that? Who would listen to that? Who would listen? Like, if you want to listen to people have sex, why not watch people? Porn, because then if you happen to be like, I'd really like to see the pictures that are going on with these sounds. Uh, you can. You could just turn your head and look at porn. Which, but I really don't know why SoundCloud removed it because I have found some weird shit on SoundCloud, like Undertale ASMR sex shit. It, SoundCloud is a bad place, which is why we have our podcast on there. Check it out. Actually, don't. Only the first episode's there, uh, because I got lazy after episode one. But that is, that's the news, I guess, for better or for worse. I know I, I'm super exciting by myself, aren't I? Oh, I did see a movie this week. Uh, that was not a joke movie, a la last, you know, like last week where it was Spy Kids 3. Wait, no, Guardians was last week, wasn't it? Not that any of you care. No, Spy Kids was last week. Actually, both of them were last week. Um, I watched a movie called Imperium, which its subject matter is kind of my, I don't want to call it my cup of tea, but my, I don't know, it's my thing. I, I go in waves of, like, movie genres that I'm super into. Um, and this deals with... I'm going to have a really hard time not coming off, like, real human trash here. But uh, this movie, uh, Imperium, deals with uh, white supremacy and white nationalism. And my thing for movies a few months ago was I was super into drug cartel movies. So, like, Sicario and, like, Breaking Bad and, you know, shit like that. Um, but this uh, Imperium and Green Room, you know, dealing with neo-Nazis and white supremacists and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Imperium was actually really good. Uh, now, I guess to clear the air, I will say uh, it was not supporting those things. It uh, was about uh, an FBI agent going undercover as a skinhead in working his way up the ranks to figure out some terror plot that they're all trying to put together. Uh, and it's fucking good. I, I liked it a lot. Some pretty good tense moments. 
like I said, the it's I don't like saying that skinheads interest me because they, they don't. I know I'm taking a you know this is a really uh, weird stance to take, but I don't like white supremacists. I know that's a weird stance to take these days, but I'm not pro that. But it, it's just a, a subject that I find fascinating currently. Uh, they make good bad guys. I think that's what it is. Because in both uh, this and the green room, they were both the bad guys. White supremacists make for some damn good bad guys. Uh, so, Imperium, I won't spoil it, uh, but it stars Daniel Radcliffe, which... That poor boy. That poor boy who's older than me. That poor man. I'll give him some credit. Um... Before he goes undercover and starts looking and dressing like a skinhead in the movie, I'm like, why is Harry Potter in this FBI office? Because that he will never not be Harry Potter. So the first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, however long it takes for him to for the movie to kick into gear, it's a little bleh, because you're just looking at Harry Potter be Harry Potter, um, minus the magic. So it was really exciting. But it, it actually wasn't that bad. But all in all, it was a very good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I check it out. It's on Netflix. Here's my movie recommendation, uh, which I will use in place of an anime recommendation because I don't have any. Because I haven't watched any in so long that I, and I just can't think anymore. I got nothing. But. I get well. We're I mean I got the time in front of me. We're a little short this week, but fuck it. I'm alone. You're getting a shorter episode this week. Uh, that was the podcast, everybody. Uh, episode 15, I believe it's 15. Um, crazy that uh, we're still doing them. I guess. Here's to 15 more. But if you have a, a subject you want us to talk about. Send us an email, uh, powermovepodcast at gmail.com. Pretty self-explanatory email address, but uh, you can ask us pretty much anything. We've only ever had two questions, I think, in all 15 episodes. But there, there's no subject that's off limits. You know, you ask us whatever you want. We're, we're, we're dying to have uh, something to fill time with because it is something we struggle with every fucking week. Um, you can follow this podcast on Twitter <clears throat> at Power Moose Pod. Um, but I've said it before, I'll say it again. You don't have to. I, I don't use it, really. Um, just follow Duncan and I. And if, for whatever reason, this is your first episode, go listen to another episode with Duncan so you know who Duncan is. He's my co-host and partner in crime. Uh, you can follow him at Append Gray on Twitter. That's A P P E N D G R A Y E Y. I should know these things. No, nope, I was wrong. A P P E N D G R A Y uh, is Duncan's Twitter. Mine is at Metal Gear Whale, or you can just search up. Uh, Power Moose Colin will also find it. And I think that's it. If you want to see me shit post, you can follow me on Tumblr. Same thing. Power, uh, not Power Moose Colin. Fuck. Uh, Metal Gear Whale on Tumblr, too. I don't know why I'm plugging Tumblr, but. I don't know. You like shit posts, because that's it's all it is. And it's not even my shit posts. No one, no one posts original content on Tumblr, it's all just reposted garbage. But that's the podcast this week. Hopefully next week we will have a Duncan. Um, maybe I'll make him do one of these by himself. In, in fact, he might. Uh, I've, got a va- I've got a vacation coming up uh, in pretty soon. Uh, and I might put that on him on how to figure it out. But that's it. Have a good day, everybody. And uh, I love you. Mwah. <laughs>